Welcome to the Valhalla Filmcast, a show where normal guys talk about the films that they love. And here are your hosts, Bryce Thompson, Brian Hammond, and Cody Ryrie. Now get ready, because the show starts in 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Valhalla Filmcast. I am Bryce Thompson, and I am here with Cody Ryrie. We are absent, Brian, but that's okay. He'll be back later. Uh, time for the weekly update. Uh, this week, in trailers, there's a new Magnificent Seven trailer. Yeah. What would you think of that one? I keep getting more and more excited for this movie. This one really focused on um, Chris Pratt. They're selling him. The first one seemed more Denzel Washington yeah. specific. And he's still a lot in this one, too. But really, they're like, okay, Chris Pratt's one of the biggest box office draws, you know, right now after Jurassic World and... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. He's he's big stuff. So they really focused on that. They also showed um, all the other Magnificent Seven kind of in quick su- succession. I didn't realize that, but Vincent D'Onofrio plays one of them. He's the oh, really? uh, the alien from the first Men in Black, and he had his own Law and Order series. Anyway, he's a really yeah. good actor, and he plays this really. He's gotten very chubby later in life, and he has a giant beard, and he plays a tracker in this. But he's a yeah, really good actor. Yeah, yeah. So that's he's far down the roster too. So if there's that many good actors that they don't even mention him, that's exciting. That he's like they're okay. Yeah, we got him too. I'm like, what? He's amazing. So yeah, I think it'll be good, and it's made by the same people that made Training Day. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be good. You know, they have experience working with Denzel and making an amazing movie there. So, I mean, you have good material in front of you. You, I feel like it's just going to be great awesome. cast too. It's yeah, great cast, which we saw in Ghostbusters. That a great cast with great material makes a good movie, <laughs> even if the rest of the world says it's not. <laughs> We're in our little Alamo, our Ghostbusters Alamo, defending off the rest of the world who says it's terrible. So yeah, I really loved that movie. I want to see it again. Me I've too. been looking for a chance to go see it again. So it's good. I don't understand if you hated the movie. I feel like this is kind of the opposite because Mad Max, people just love that movie. Mm -hmm. So, but I I want to know why people don't like it. Yeah, give us feedback. We'd love, if you totally disagree and you think it's awful, that's fine. Just, we want to know why. That would be very fascinating. So, and not just because it's stupid. (laughs) And also if it's just because it has dumb women in it, that's not a good reason either because that's just silly because they are, I thought they were hilarious. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know that I ever like laughed till I cried during the movie, but no. there wasn't like a minute or two that didn't go by where I didn't chuckle. Like it was kind of a constant funny. Yeah, yeah it was the whole time. It was a really pleasant two hours. Like I had a good time. So it was good. Anyways, little little <laughs> Ghostbusters Soapbox. rant. But um, speaking of Ghostbusters in the box office, mm-hmm. it it did okay. It's Not, forty something million. Yeah, forty. Yeah. A little over 46, yeah, Yeah. 46 something. So not bad, but not fantastic. The Secret Life of Pets in its second weekend beat it. Yeah, The Secret Life of Pets is destroying it, which makes more sense because it's an animated movie about pets. I mean, where are you going to go wrong with that? Well, put it in perspective, this was the biggest opening ever for a Melissa McCarthy movie. That's, which that was shocking when I heard that. Because because she's had some hits, yeah. yeah. Which I think would be more than this one, but I guess since you have the name Ghostbusters, people are going to see it. Well, and it costs more to make than her average movie. Like, usually comedies are very inexpensive, Yeah, and this one costs a little more money, so... Makes sense. It's another part. Very interesting. Oh, and Finding Dory, setting a U.S. box office record. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, too. Especially because, like, I knew people liked Finding Nemo. But I didn't know they liked it that much to be able to go see Finding Dory even more. Animated box office record. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. It didn't beat Star no, Wars. I yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, animated. Yeah. Um, but like, that's pretty interesting to me. Yeah, I still haven't seen it. So it's good. I really liked it. Uh, I like Dory. She's a funny character. Um, there were some characters in there that I thought were questionable. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Did we talk about it on a weekly update? I don't know when we talked about it. I think it was. Well, if we did, I'm going to repeat it, so (laughs) 
but there's there's one character and i was gonna do a review on this movie but it, time didn't work out and i didn't get done but the one thing that i thought was questionable the whole movie was great but there's two characters that i find I don't know what they were trying to get. You think they might be them. making fun of mentally handicapped people? Yeah, yeah. just I feel like their one is uh, Gerald, and the other is Brittany. Uh, one is a, a sill, and the other is a bird. Okay. And the one that is the most uh, disturbing to me and my wife was was um, Gerald, because you have these two um, sills that are sitting on this rock. And they... You're, you're laughing, though. It's hilarious, <laughs> which is why it's bad. Like, I shouldn't be laughing at this mentally handicapped sill. Like, oh, that's I see sad. what you're saying. Okay, like, yeah, that's yeah. not good. Don't teach my children that. Yeah. But it's it's hilarious. Like, it is. It's <laughs> funny. But he's... He, they're like, hey, what's... Like, you, and he, like, um, Nemo and his father are talking to these sills, asking him how to get around this place and uh gerald climbs up on the rock and the sills like yell at him they're like they tell him to get off the rock you know they scare him away and you're like wait what just happened (laughs) and like maybe i'll have to see it to really get what you're saying yeah you'd have to and then there's a part where he has a bucket and they need the bucket so they like invite him over and they're like hey you can come sit on our rock you can come sit on our rock and they take his bucket and then they kick him off. And I was like, that's so rude. Like, why? I don't understand. Like, I need, a, like, a creator of the movie to, like, tell me, like, okay, this is what we expected with this part. Mm. But, yeah, I, I would, like, I don't know. It's very interesting. Point being, though, it's doing very well. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> Despite its few flaws, I think it was a good movie. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll definitely have to catch it. Finding Nemo is not my favorite. Pixar movie. No, I I've never been super into it. I mean, I appreciate it. It's very well made, but yeah. I don't know, I'm more of an Incredibles Ratatouille guy. So yeah, I don't think Nemo was one of my favorite. Toy Story. I like Toy Story movies. Yeah, Toy Story. I really enjoy Toy Story movie every once in a while. Isn't I it? Really it's like weird. the original. Was it the original? I thought this the other day. It freaked me out. But the original came out when I was 11. Really? Yeah. So I was like, whoa. That's gross. Like, <laughs> and they are doing a fourth Toy Story. Have you heard about this? No. Huh? Yeah, it's in the works. It's the search for Bo Peep. It's a love story, apparently. Very so, interesting. So, hmm, there's probably not many details about this. No, well, and they, they, they said after Toy Story 3, look, we've ended it perfectly. We're done. Yeah. And then, and this could be just studio spin, but it worked on me. <laughs> they um, they were like, but look, somebody proposed this idea for a story, and it was so good that it wore us down. We couldn't possibly not make it. And I was like, what? What is it? What is it? And that's the only thing they would say is that it's a love story, and they're looking for Bo Peep as part of that love story. So I'm interested. That is interesting. Hey, the first three, I really like the first three. I mean, what, they're good. What so, happened with uh, Bo Peep in the first place? I don't remember. She's not in the third one. She's in the first and second one. Then by the time the third one rolls around, there's lots of toys that have been sold off Mm -hmm. or whatever you don't know. And they just kind of mention that she's not there anymore and Woody's all sad about it. Dude, that's pretty interesting. We'll see. They also have um, The Incredibles 2 is in production. Which I think that I feel like like Incredibles 2 and if they make this... um, Fourth tour... tour Oh, it's already in the works. It's for sure. Well, when they make it... Yeah. when it gets released it will be those will break it'll be huge yeah. huge I feel like <clears throat> Incredibles 2 has had so much people have been waiting for Incredibles 2 for since it got released the first one sets itself up for a sequel more than like any Anything. other like I it's know. perfect for it's like okay let's go you know yeah, like, exactly it's... he comes out the mom guy comes up and you're like dude Next year, Incredibles two, <laughs> and then nothing really. Yeah, I've been I've been waiting for it, and I watched Incredibles when I was little. So that's really funny because that was on my mission when it came out. So I wasn't that little, but <laughs> I felt little. I, I was okay. Let me clarify for those who don't know how old you are when you do that. Uh, but I was twenty when it came out. So I was twenty. You were. I don't know. I'm 32. How old are you now? 
25. So, I, I was probably like 12. I graduated from college, but the math is escaping me on that. Anyway, you were <laughs> younger than me. <laughs> yeah, I was. Not that much littler, but hey, I was young enough to think that I was little. So, but yeah, so anyway, great movie. We're excited for the sequel. Point B. Ooh, it's been, we're just shooting off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get through it, don't worry. All right, all right. Well, talking about upcoming movies, this is a good segue, right? Yes. Um, next week, we've got Star Trek um, Beyond, which yeah. I will see and give you a review of here on the film cast. And also look for, wait, maybe not. What? Are we, never mind. <laughs> False see, alarm. now I'm in suspense. Wait, False alarm. <laughs> okay. Right. But yeah, keep, keep an eye out for the Star Trek show when it comes out. Oh, hey, and I'm going to throw a pitch in for my, well, it's our, but I'm the only one that's written for it yet. Our blog that's attached to the film cast, yes. which right now we're trying to work out all this stuff, but right now you can go to valhallafilmcast.blogspot.com and see the wonderful three entries that we they're have amazing. so far. They're, they're beautiful works of art. <laughs> Check them out. Most recent one on Ghostbusters, so... Watch, or not watch them. You can't watch no, them. No, no. You can read them. You can them. read them, yes. Do that. If you didn't go to school in Idaho, you can read them. So... That's <laughs> true. Uh, what else we got? Oh, Jason Bourne's The Week After. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come, come. We'll be doing that. And then even more exciting, Suicide oh, Squad. Yes. Be prepared. Weeks. Be prepared. I've got some good ideas for shows, so look up for that. And, uh, oh, 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 big news in the yeah. Blu-ray. Oh, well, before Frank we get to that, Jan. before oh, we get okay, to that, okay. that is super exciting. Before. That is before. super exciting. But when we're going to upcoming movies, right? Yes. Um, we were going to get The Founder, which oh, is the yeah. Michael Keaton movie about the founding of McDonald's, which looked awesome. It looks great. We're big fans of Keaton here at the podcast. It's one that we said we were looking forward to yep. in our year's update. And which... it was supposed to be released... In two weeks, around August 5th, yep, two weeks-ish, yep. all of a sudden, boom, push back to January 2017. Yep. January 2017th is the wide release. It's getting yeah. a December limited release, but... Boo! <laughs> for those that can't go to a limited release, uh, look for it in January. It's kind of going to be, I feel, it's almost like The Revenant. Yeah, that's exactly of, what they did for that. Yeah, um, the year. Although it looks funnier than the Revenant. Very much funnier. <laughs> Very much funnier. I think it'll probably. I feel like almost it's going to have kind of the same effect, just because McDonald's is such a big, such a big uh, thing in America. Yeah, like you can. Well, everywhere. It's America. all over the world. Oh yeah, but like even for America too, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah, exactly. But like, you can despise McDonald's. But you still are interested by the Golden Arches, you know? And so, like, a movie, I feel like it's going to draw a lot of attention to Well, it. okay, the, the bad side is it's being moved away. The good side of this is that the company that's producing it feels like it's so good that they're putting it in award season. Yes. So, it's yes. not a bad sign. It's a good sign. I'm just booing it because <clears throat> I wanted to see it in two weeks and not six months or whatever. Yeah, while. Wow. So, yeah, I think that, again, like you said, that's a good sign because that means that they feel like it's a really good movie. Good well, enough and to Keaton's, attend. he's magic right now because yeah. he was in Birdman, which won Best Picture, and then he was in Spotlight the next year, which won Best Picture, and now he's in this. Yeah, I, I, I want him to get, like, some love. Though. Do you think he, uh, I feel like, I feel like, I haven't seen yeah. The following viewers' opinions uh, and commentary like are the sole property kind of, of the Valhalla Filmcast. Any unauthorized reproduction without prior consent is prohibited. Any incidental music, audio clips, or film trailers are used for the sole purpose of film criticism and commentary as allowed under the Fair Use Act. He's only made two movies that I know of before. He made um, The Blind Side. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. And, and then uh, well, he was okay. He was okay. Movie. No, don't get me wrong. I, I didn't People hate it. it. Yes, fair enough. But that was an Oscar for Sandra Bullock. And then he made Saving Mr. Banks, which I thought was a better movie. Mm-hmm. Didn't win anybody in Oscars, but I really liked it as a movie. He's good with actors. So that's why I'm excited to see him with Keaton, because Keaton's one of my favorites. Well, you have a, um, Nick Offerman. Yes, He's yes. Too. He looks hilarious. I love him from Parks and Rec. He was yeah. great. And in 21 Jump Street. Yes. He's hilarious. So that'll be into. I'm excited for that movie. It's one that we mentioned and now made our list irrelevant. 
because they jacked it up. But hey, it happens. <laughs> uh, so look for that um, next year. Um, now we can go on to Blu-ray. Blu-ray and... announcement. We've been talking about it pretty much all, every week since we found out about <laughs> it. But it's official. Yep. They have announced that uh, Pan's Labyrinth will be uh, in the Criterion releases for October. October 11th, to be specific. Uh, <laughs> I'm counting the hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> but also, with that announcement, they have announced mm. that there will be a Spanish... Uh, you can say it better. Well, it's, I don't know exactly like this, the technical name, but it's the Spanish language trilogy that Del Toro has made. It's Kronos, Devil's Backbone, and Pan's Labyrinth. All in a set. Oh, it's amazing. And then at first I'm like, okay, well, I don't really care because I've already got Kronos and Devil's Backbone. And I'll just get Pan's Labyrinth by itself. But in the set, there's like a hundred and something page hardcover book about Del Toro. And I was like, screw you, Criterion. Like, See, I was going to save my money <laughs> and now it's gone. So, because Del Toro to me is like, yes, you know, we, the coup de grace. So, those who have been with us since forever know how we feel about Del Toro. <laughs> If you ha- don't, go down to the very end, to the very beginning, listen to all of them, because we talk in depth about like, every, every Del, Toro, Del movie. Toro movie. I think that may be the only filmmaker we've ever done a, this is all Tarantino. of their movies. Oh, and Tarantino, Tarantino, we did that too, that's right. Yeah. But they're the ones that have, the filmmakers that we really care about that have done something. Yeah, right. well Tarantino's like your guy, and Del Toro's kind of my guy. Yeah, I quite enjoy like, a Tarantino <laughs> film. Uh, but yeah, so that'll be really interesting. I think... I was thinking about it. I was thinking about Pan's Labyrinth and um, Devil's Backbone and all his movies. And I was thinking, I think Kronos, I missed that movie. Is that your favorite? I, it's like growing on me. Like, really? I haven't watched it in forever, <laughs> but I'm like, dude, that's a really good movie. It is really like good, When yeah. I watched it, I wasn't really used to his style. And so I well, was that like, was the first one you watched, I think, wasn't it? No. No, I'd no. seen Pan's Labyrinth a while ago. Oh, that's right, that's right. Ago. And then I think I watched Devil's Backbone, and then I think I watched those other ones. Because we, we actually watched Kronos together the yes. first time we saw uh-huh. it. Yeah. But Kronos, it was just interesting. Like, I wasn't used to it. And Ron Perlman was like, you're not a guy that hunt that's what? vampires. People. You're used to like, seeing him in the biker show on yeah, FX. He's, yeah, he's clay. Yeah. So that's <laughs> And so, like, he was just weird. And so... But then I've been thinking about it a lot, and I'm like, dude, I really liked that movie a whole bunch. I need to rewatch it. And because I, I mean, I think I'll say that after every movie because, <laughs> I, like, I think about Devil's Backbone, and that movie is really good too. Yeah. And well, I love everything Del Toro, but my favorites are his Spanish language movies. Yes. Those are the, yeah. For me, those are just a level above. I'll agree. I'll agree. I think that, yeah, those three movies, they're like his. You can they do form an everything. awesome trilogy too. Oh yeah, they do. You know? Yeah, it's so. amazing. And his English ones, they're good too. I quite enjoyed uh, the robot one. Um, Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim. I enjoyed that a lot. And I was sad to hear that they're not making um, the number two kind of film. It's well, so they're making Pacific Rim two. It's yes. set. Del Toro has nothing to do with it. Oh yeah, that's what the that's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. That's what it was. I knew that. Del Toro like got booted and like <laughs> so pretty much it died. He got booted after Crimson Peak didn't do super well. See, I liked so, Crimson Peak. So did I. I really do. But again, his other Spanish speaking ones are amazing. I hope his next movie that he gets to do is Spanish speaking again because I think he just can just this. It. You know how bad? Okay, this is this is a little embarrassing to admit this, but embarrassing stuff makes good podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> like the crying show, everybody talks to me about how much they like that one, and that was the most embarrassing thing I've ever recorded out loud. Hey, so, you never talked about Bruce Jenner. That's, <laughs> that's true. So. Maybe the most embarrassing <laughs> thing you've ever recorded. It was close for me. Yeah. No, I have. Okay, whenever I get bored at work, which I never do because I love my job. He, if anybody's listening, anyway, um, if I get bored at work or somewhere else, I have daydreams, and the daydreams are about me somehow getting you know seven billion dollars. And the first thing I do is I go and I fund anything Del Toro wants to make as a movie. And I just throw $300 million at him and I say, just whatever. Please, please. Just go, this is how much my ticket costs. Yeah, no kidding. Go for uh, it. Because I get so hurt. He has all these really cool ideas and he talks about them and he never gets to make them. Because his movies aren't super popular, if we're being brutally honest with ourselves. 
No, so, that's what I don't understand. I guess maybe we're on a different wavelength than the rest <laughs> of the world because we think they're amazing, but I I like them yeah. so much. Like, they're just so, they're deep and they're very interesting. Maybe that's the reason people don't like them because you have to, like, actually watch them. Look the into it. Yeah. And, like, to get it, if not. Because, like, Crimson Peak, if you're going to, like, which we tried to warn all of you. <laughs> that's right. Not a horror movie. <laughs> if you go to it, it's just kind of like a interesting ghost story. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. It's not a horror movie. I mean, there's some awesome, like, the end fight scene. That's so cool. <laughs> like, come on. That's, like, the coolest thing I've ever seen. But, I don't know. It's very interesting. Well, and the, the one project, and then we'll get off this, I promise. I'm sorry. <laughs> he has this project, Out the Mountains of Madness, where it's this H.P. Lovecraft story where... This group of explorers in early 1900s goes down to Antarctica and they find an ancient city under the ice and they wake up monsters inside of it and stuff. Mm. And That's it's all planned cool. out. Tom Cruise was supposed to be the main actor. He signed on for it. Wow. They had all the monsters designed and ready. Oh, they went and so pitched cool. it, but it cost too much money. It cost like $200 million to make it. And he wouldn't do it unless they'd let him make it a hard R. Nice. they said it was too violent. Like he couldn't do it for <laughs> anything else. And they won't do it. They won't make it, especially after Crimson Peak. I don't think it's ever going to happen. See, so why? I don't know. It makes me sad that Crimson Peak kind of didn't do as well as I feel like, as I feel Del Toro deserves. Yeah. Like, I feel like he deserves to be uh, the Revenant directors. Yeah, yeah. Because in our, in, in your <laughs> Look at that. I didn't roll the R a little. The, <laughs> I, I like some of his stuff. Yeah, like, me too. Uh, but my favorite thing he's ever done is Birdman. Because Birdman doesn't take itself too seriously. Yeah, exactly. I think he gets a little pretentious. Like, if you if you push him, like, I don't know if you ever saw Babel. No. Or Babel, or however you say it. Yeah. And also The Revenant. Like, they're really good movies. But they kind of go into, like, we're looking at the universe. And well, also, what does it all mean? And, you know. And, and yeah, like, you look at that and, like... Never have you ever seen a movie that you can see the actor's breath go on. Yeah, yeah. And, like, it's like, <laughs> look, I'll do whatever I want. <laughs> but, like, when I talked about it, I was like, that's amazing. That's so cool. Which I do. I think that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. But no one else is getting away with that. He walks a fine line. Oh, yeah. And it's just weird because... There, okay, there's the... Th- okay, I promise we're getting off soon. <laughs> the, um, there's the, the three Mexican directors that all popped up at the same time. There's mm-hmm. Alfonso Cuaron... Uh, and Yuri too, and Del Toro, and me easily my favorite is Del Toro. Yes. But the other two have done so much better, box office and awards wise, than Del Toro has because uh, Quaron made Gravity, mm-hmm. which he won Best Director for, and he won yeah. Best Screenplay and whatever else. And Yuri too's won Best Director two years in a freaking row. That's crazy for his movies. And Del he Toro's won. never been nominated. He was not <laughs> nominated for Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth was not nominated for Best Picture. It lost Best Foreign Language Film. Uh, so Well, they let him read off the nominations last year. That's true. Huh? <laughs> Give it <laughs> like, to his buddy. Oh, come on. Like, that's like such a kick in the face. Like, we're not going to nominate you, but here, do you want to read the nominations? And can we say, even if you hated Crimson Peak, you had to admit that the production design and the cinematography exactly. were amazing. It is. It's so... Like, that's the thing. His ideas are mind-blowing and i think that's why it's so interesting because it's you go into a del toro movie and it'd be nothing that you ever have ever you, seen you haven't seen this before exactly ever. yes uh-huh. like when would a ghost ever look like that red i know with what? holes in the caved in forehead because that's i've what never seen that before it. like that's so cool like it has the hatchet like in its head oh that one too like what? yeah why would the ghost have a hatchet in its head well, well that makes total sense because that's what killed it you know and like they're all like crickety. Well, in the house, the house oh, that so bleeds. Cool. Yeah, like it's so. Oh, come cool. on. <laughs> and like, there's just so much like interesting, like symbolism all throughout the house. There's so much to chew on. Oh, it's yeah. So much. Like the moths. Like, how yeah. cool is that? Like, you get to like the don't go place, and it's just covered in moths. Oh, because if they eat little, and that's where she almost dies, and that's like the sister's place to go. Like, it's <laughs> so interesting and disgusting. Well, in the, the basement with all the pits where they keep yeah. the bodies is, like, oh. hell, basically, I, you know? It's so cool. And then they go in the, up into the white area to have the fight, and that's really cool. I, with her nice little, like, revenge, like, right at the end, her <laughs> saying, like, oh, that's cool. 
Ugh. I'm going to have to watch it again now. It's amazing. We talked myself into watching it again. See, Crimson Peak. And that's the thing. We just said the Spanish movies are better, which they are. But just listen to what we just said about Crimson Peak, <laughs> the one that we didn't even that didn't even do. We didn't put up with that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, come on. His movies are amazing. He needs more record, more uh, people to live, watch his movies. And Here's what I'm hoping. Animation. This is my dream again. And then we'll get off this. <laughs> is that he goes, he makes some small movie. Because he's been talking about this small movie he wants to make with one monster. Yeah. It's only got one creature. Okay. And then it's small budget. He makes it. And that's the movie that takes off. Right? Because he doesn't need any money for that. They'll let him make it. And that's the one that gets the awards and is popular. And then he'll get the money to make bigger stuff. Yeah. I don't know that's going to happen. But I'm holding that hope. So. I think it'll be so cool. Another thing. Just one more thing. <laughs> if you look at like pop culture... His movies are riddled through it. Mm-hmm. Like, there's stuff. Like, you always see the Pan's Labyrinth guy with the... The, the Simpsons guy. did an opening devoted to all of his movies once. Yeah, see, One of on. the Halloween films was the opening was just Del Toro movies. Because his monsters are amazing. Like, the guy with the eyeballs in his head. The pale man. The pale man, yeah. He is everywhere. Like, you'll always see him. Like, like usually it's, like, stuff like that's, like, on comedy stuff. Yeah. Or it can be serious stuff too, but you'll always see him. Always. Because like, what? That's amazing. Who would ever think to put some dude's eyeballs? Like, it's so cool. Well, I love the the little boy ghost in Devil's Backbone. Yes. Who looks like a cracked porcelain doll. Yep. He's so cool. Come on! You know? I remember, because like, I don't like horror movies. That's been documented very well. (laughs) Uh, And I remember watching it and I was like, kind of like, because you, you're coming up to him, and yeah, like, I'm gonna see this guy. Because <laughs> you know Del Toro loves to show off his monsters, yeah, so you're like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna see this guy. And then you turn around, and you're like, oh, and you're like, oh, hey, he's not bad. He's pretty yeah. sweet looking, actually. Yeah. And the blood plume that kind of yeah, goes so up, cool. and and that's another thing that I like about his ghost. that kind of have a common thread is he's in the water, so the blood is coming up, and then mm-hmm. you kind of get that same thing from. Uh, Crimson Peak too. Yeah. Well, they're all red because they've been in the clay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, that's really cool. That's really neat because, yeah, it's so cool. I can well, go in in Kronos, the, the I love, I love, I love, I love the the golden device yeah. that has the bug in it. Mm-hmm. Like it's creepy and it's cool looking and it's so original. Again, that's yeah. the most original thing in a vampire movie in the last like thirty years. Well, who would ever think of that? Like. That's how become a vampire is a bug in a this yeah. thing, and like <laughs> you like have to have it. It's like a drug, and so he's like freaking out on the stairs, like ah. Oh. You're like whoa, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, it's really neat. It's cool. Watch okay. all his movies. We're done. That's it. I promise. <laughs> well, if you oh, oh, last thing. Brian wanted me to mention something oh, in yes, his absence. Yes. Okay. Um, there's a new release coming out of uh, the Universal Monster movies on Blu-ray. Uh, big packets, a lot of them don't have Blu-ray releases. So if you're a big, this is like Frankenstein, Wolfman, Dracula. Um, if you're a really big fan of those, this is something to look up. And uh, yeah, he assures me it's a big deal. So there you go. That's interesting. That's pretty neat. Cool. Well, if you stuck with us through that. <laughs> the Del Toro Love Fest. <laughs> mess of a show. We thank you. Please share it with all your friends and tell them to stick with it. But uh, this has been the Mahalo Filmcast. I am Bryce Thompson. And I'm Cody Rari. And we'll talk to you next time.